Are you going to make Tom and Jerry talk? No way. What's up, folks? It's Cameraman, a.k.a. The Blur Girl. And welcome to a little sneak peek look behind the scenes at the new Warner Brothers movie, Tom and Jerry. In this interview, I'm going to be talking to director Tim Story and star Chloe Moretz. Before I forget, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like. Click that little bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos and comment below. So I hope you enjoy these interviews and check out the Tom and Jerry movie playing now on HBO Max. We all grew up on Tom and Jerry. What does it feel like to be able to helm this movie? Um, it's kind of a dream. It's kind of a dream come true that you didn't know you had. You know, it's one of those. I grew up on this cartoon. Um, just know it's just kind of in my DNA. And I found that when it was, you know, when I found out there was a movie being made and that I was going to be, um, you know, candidate for it to to pull it to, to you know bring it to the the, the big screen. Um, I, you know, you immediately go, well, how, how do you make a movie out of Tom and Jerry? I read the script, the script was brilliant. And um, I just found that, hey, I know this cartoon, if, if, not, if, if not more, just as much as anybody else. And my love for the characters, I just had to be a part of it. So luckily it, it, it came this way. We're trying to go the extra distance with them. And, and, you know, for me growing up with Tom and Jerry, it was always this kind of sacred part of my childhood and and one of the first you know shows to really enliven my imagination um and so when I got the opportunity to read the script on this project and potentially sign on to be a part of it I was really nervous because I was pretty you know I was pretty hesitant on whether or not it would be as a fan whether or not it would be good quite frankly because I think you know it's really easy to mess up something this great um and when I read the script I was blown away. It was it was just pitch perfect. And when I talked to Tim Story, our amazing director, he was really on the same page of me of being obsessed with this cartoon and wanting to keep it on that pedestal and all of us try and, you know, raise ourselves to their level. So I think I think I hope it really comes across how genuine the the care and, and adoration we have for this uh, you know, this IP. Now, of course, people are going to compare it to classics like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, um, Space Jam. But what do you think is different uh, about Tom and Jerry than those two movies? Well, Tom and Jerry has its own universe. Um, one of the things that um, I guess is, is really different is how specific um, these characters, their story already exists. You know, um, when you think of Tom and Jerry, even though I'm doing a movie with people, um, at no point do you think people. You, you just think these characters. And I guess what, what kind of makes them different is kind of like their specific, their specific um, uh, fight. You know, the, these frenemies that you kind of grew up knowing that chased each other, uh, uh, gave each other a lot of crap, you know, um, really, really, and, and many times, tried to injure injure one another quite um creatively and we wanted to stick to that and I, so it's kind of a, it has its own universe and i just wanted to recreate that in in a real world and make it um hopefully give a, a lot of respect to um the original material now i got to ask are you going to make tom and jerry talk no way like i <laughs> i am i am a, a, a the first thing I did is go, I went back to the Hanna-Barbera, the original shorts, watched pr pretty much all of them, all of the ones I could find. And the rules, you know, people have asked me before, what are the rules to making this type of movie? The rules are what they did. And Tom and Jerry didn't talk from, for conversational purposes. They never talked. Um, they screamed, you know, Tom even would turn the camera every blue moon and say something. And he sang. And I took those rules and I said, that's what we should do because one thing about those original cartoons is Butch and Spike and so many other characters did speak. So I always said that Hanna Barbera made a specific choice not to have these characters speak. And so it wasn't going to happen in the movie that I made. Knowing that you obviously don't have a Tom and Jerry in front of you, <laughs> what's it like feeling seeing the finished composites? It was incredible. You know, at the very beginning of the film, I had just seen this tiny little clip that they basically made for the studio, which was just Tom and Jerry running across a street in New York. And that was basically the reference we were going on the entire time outside of some storyboards that I saw and then the puppets that were there on set. 
Um, I didn't know what it was actually going to really end up like. And seeing pieces and pieces of the film and then eventually the finished product, it blew me away. I mean, as a fan, I think, I think they really hit the nail on the head with that 2D airing on 3D, but not going that 3D distance because that was my biggest hesitation was, you know, don't turn these into computer generated modern characters because that's just not who they are. And I think that they, they killed it. So in, in trying to make these characters early on, we knew that these characters needed to look t 2D even though we were gonna sometime kind of play with the thickness of that 2D because of lighting, we always wanted to, to make sure that they were tr true as we could make it to their original you know, look themse you know, themselves. What we were able to create um, from this was a software that actually mimicked um, hand-drawn lines because one of the things that brought these characters to life in the old days was that they, they, drew, every, they drew every frame. So we wanted to bring that to this movie. And even though we were going through a 3D CGI workflow, we knew that we, in order for them to look truly like Tom and Jerry, there had to be, I won't say mistakes, but there had to be specific lines drawn to their cheeks and their, their eyes and, and just all these certain things that you know of. So the, 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 you know, the geniuses over at Framestore um, at the helm of Michael Eames um, were able to kind of create a way to, to hand draw. This, uh, these characters um, on top of um, CGI created 2D, if, if that makes sense. So what's more difficult, stunts for Kick-Ass or talking to a pole or something? Honestly, <laughs> like that's a great question because I, I didn't know how physical it would be or how mentally draining it would be. But I will say I was probably some of my most tired I've ever been on a set from coming home from these work days because not only was it mentally exhausting doing this improv opposite nothing and then imagining what they were doing. I mean, it was like doing SAT prep all day. You know what I mean? You're just sitting there like trying to like really focus on it all. But also, you know, I really wanted to up the ante on the physical comedy and kind of meet the cartoon um, characters with the human uh, physicality. So I was, you know, definitely throwing myself into the deep end and it felt like I was doing stunts at some points, you know, running around in these four inch heels chasing a mouse and I also bit off more than I could chew with choosing to wear heels every day and by the end of that movie I was like I never want to see a, a, a you know a, a tight skirt and a heel ever again <laughs> <laughs> sneakers in all of your contracts literally yeah I'm like just give me some sneakers and I'm good